Hi, I'm Willie. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here and I appreciate each and every one of you. And in the last video, we talked about managing your Synology Active Directory and using different tools to do it that would um, perhaps extend the way that you can use Active Directory, give you a little bit more, um, actually allow you to take advantage of things like uh, group policy and things like that. And uh, several things came up and that I wanted to address. I want to go back and talk about this. So um, first of all, the question was asked, can we back up Active Directory on the Synology? And so we're going to go over here to our Synology. We're going to go to um, Hyper Backup. And what we're going to do is we're going to select Remote. Well, we'll just do Local Folder. And I'll select uh, a folder. We'll let it create a directory. We're not going to do a data backup. We are going to do an Active Directory backup. And we're just going to say AD Backup Test. And it can run nightly. We can do the backup rotation. I just want to see. I just want to make sure. It says it's available for backup. I just really want to make sure uh, that it is. I can hear the Synology grinding away. Backup now. Yes. And so it says it's processing the data. And so um, while that is processing, one of the other things that somebody asked is, should you really trust your, your enterprise's Active Directory to this? And my answer to that is, I think that this has a place. And I think that the sweet spot is going to be smaller offices, uh, nothing where you're going to need you know, a lot of servers, uh, multiple servers. Uh, I don't know if we can do a backup domain controller. That's something we're going to try in one of the next videos, whether it's a fail, whether it's successful, we are going to try that. I don't know if that works. But I think if you've got a small office, and by the way, yes, I'm re reading off my note card here. If you've got a small office, I would say, you know, five to 15 users, single site. I think this is going to be a, a good option. Um, I also think there could be better options if we can't do backup domain controllers, but I could also see how a small office, let's say five users with a couple road warriors, you've got this here, and then you're either using the C2 backup or you're offloading this stuff somewhere else. I, I think it could be a very excellent option. So, um, we are, like I said, we are going to try doing a backup domain controller. But it looks like that we can um, do the. Looks like we can do the backup on this. So let's see if we can do a. Let's go into our backup explorer here. And it just tells us that there's no available folder. So it must just be a configuration file. Um, it's nine megs. So um, whatever that you know whatever that looks like in there. So we did back something up. Uh, we would have to make some changes and then restore this, which we can also do. So uh, I want to address a couple other things about this. Some people did point out in the comments that you should not edit the default policies, and that's absolutely correct, and I wanted to um, talk about that. So some places leverage Active Directory to the level where they have entire teams this is all they do, and we're talking huge companies. Um, some that are local to me here would be like Caterpillar, State Farm, country companies. I mean, they literally have teams of people that all they deal with is Active Directory. They have war rooms. When there's a problem, they're there. And some of these places even have Microsoft employees that deal with just Active Directory at their sites. I mean, that's how comprehensive some of these are. But for a smaller environment, I think that this is a very... Uh, good option and it's a very low cost option it allows you to lock down your PCs and do certain things with your PCs at a much lower price point than having a full-blown server enterprise Microsoft installation when you may not when you may not need it um, but back to that yes we, we I don't want to start a bad habit right off the get-go so we will not um, edit the the default domain policy so what I've done is I've gone through and I have removed the um, 
the policy that we set up, which was the Windows update. And what we're going to do is I'm going to give you just a few hints, something to give you a little craving. Maybe you'll go out and you'll do some Google searches about this. Um, uh, I am not the foremost expert on Active Directory. I do know how to manage Active Directory. I do know how to set it up, and I do know uh, some of those best practices. But as you know, there are people out there that that's this is all they do. Uh, so what we're going to do is, if we look at this default domain policy, I did go in there and I backed out the. I backed out the Windows Update setting, and I went ahead and uh, updated the policy on our computer. So what we're going to do, what you should do is you should never create your uh, policies and put them at the top. And you don't have to try to cram everything into one policy. It's okay to create small policies and stack them and um, like on your OUs. So what we're going to do real quick is we're going to create a couple OUs um, and we, you know we'll move you know we can move users. I'm not going to do any user um, policies right now. I am going to do the um, policy for the Windows update, but I'm not going to do anything that's going to like target like one user or one one group. We will do some more videos. The other thing that I think that you should, um, you know, we talked about multiple sites. When you talk about multiple sites with Windows servers, there is definitely a methodology to setting up multiple sites that are, you know, whether they've got a low speed connection, whether they've got a high speed connection, there's all kinds of configuration when you get into multi physical site. Um, Active Directory. We might do a small site to site between like here and and, and Tim's house to kind of show you how that works. Um, but we won't spend a lot of time on that because I think the demographic that I'm reaching is probably like small office, maybe with that one remote. So I'm not going to get into these big scaled out Active Directory, um, you know, environments. That's that's not my wheelhouse. And that is, like I said, there are teams and there are people that that's all they do. This is meant for, you know, a smaller office. We'll get you up and going. We can tune it. We can, you know, do some of these best practices. And you don't need a whole team. You know, some of these things, like your Windows updates, you're going to set it and it's going to work and you're going to be good. You know, you've got five computers. You're not going to be in here managing Active Directory every day. You've got 10 computers. You're not going to be managing Active Directory every day. You're going to be checking log files or you're going to automate that function. But you don't need a whole team at the scale that, that we're talking about. So we are uh, going to create some OUs here and then we are going to create that policy. So first thing we'll do is we'll go to Administrative Tools and we're going to go to Users and Computers. Now just in case you're wondering and I don't know if I covered this in the last video off the top of my head. I can't remember. But if you look at the domain functional level that the Synology's uh, version of Active Directory is running at, it is Windows Server 2008 R2, just in case you ever need to know that for something. All right, so what we're going to do, we are at the uh, willyhow.com. We're going to come in here. We're going to go to New, and we're going to go to Organizational Unit. We are going to uh, call this one GP for group policy, and we'll call this PCs. Okay, and then we'll create one more for users. And there are all kinds of best practices when it comes to uh, taking care of Microsoft Windows environments. Um, when it comes to account creation, account deletion, I mean, we could really go down the the, the uh, rabbit hole with this. And if you want to see more on that, let me know. You know, I was going to do some group policy stuff, you know, that would be appropriate for, you know, 5 to 15 users, single office, maybe two offices, things like that. So um, if you want to see some of those other things, let, let me know. Um, but we won't get too, we won't get too grandiose. With this but if you want to see some of the stuff when it comes to like users and groups and things like that like we always design around groups when we can so uh, we can definitely get into that so let me know if you want some more of those things 
All right, so we've got our group policy PC. So we're gonna come up here to computer and we're gonna drag this management station down here to group policy PCs. It's gonna warn us that moving this can uh, prevent the system from working the way it's designed because it knows that group policies can be applied different ways. And are you sure you wanna move this object? And we're gonna say yes. So now if we go to group policy PCs, my PC is in there. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna hop back over to our um, our group policy management and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and we're gonna go to group policy PCs and we're gonna right click and we're gonna go create a GPO in this domain and link it here so we're gonna create a new group policy object and we're gonna call this Windows update it's got a very specific uh, function we're gonna say okay the server is gonna do its thing in the background and just so you know that we don't have that configured yet I am gonna pull up Windows Update and you can see right here Windows Update looks like it is not configured so we'll go ahead and close that and then I think a fun exercise after we do this would be to restore that Active Directory and see what happens. It could totally blow everything up. Um, so I will definitely uh, I'll definitely try it. So, I mean, if we don't try things, what good's the lab, right? The lab is here so we can break things. So this is going to get its group policy stuff created there it is Windows updates and so we can actually right click on it and edit and now under computer configuration we will go to policies administrative templates Windows components and I mean there are like I said before thousands and thousands and thousands of these so we're gonna configure automatic updates we're gonna enable it uh, auto download and notify for install um, I'm going to say auto download and schedule the install every day, 3 a.m. That's fine. Yes, you can fine fine tune this, but that is not what we're going to do. Also, another thing that you want to do, put comments in here so that if you configure something that's not, you know, like a Windows update, right, that a lot of people are going to look at, you know, put comments in here like, um, you know, you know, configured by Willie Howe, um, and then any other extraneous information that may be helpful, you know, in the future. So, um, right? So there's a comment there, and you can see over here it says comment. So now if we bring up our command prompt here and we do our GP update force, it's going to go out. It's going to update the group policy on the machine. Uh, somebody did bring up, somebody did bring up too that they thought that changing the password policy on the Synology doesn't work. And I haven't verified that yet. We will know. Um, and I could speed it up, uh, but we're going to be doing quite a few videos on this. Um, so I figure that when we get to that, when the password's supposed to expire, um, we'll see if we'll see if that works out. So it was just reported. I can't verify it yet. We will verify it in another video. And I do appreciate everybody that uh, takes time to comment on the videos. Everybody who comes over, um, and you know we all make each other a little bit a little bit better and I do appreciate each and every one of you I, I know you hear me say that but I really do uh, I really do appreciate all of you alright so our group policy is updated so let's see what happens when we go over here to Windows Update we should get uh, um, let's see here change settings some settings are managed by your system administrator and you can see uh, install updates automatically every day at 3 a.m. So we can go in there and we can really start, you know, really start tweaking these settings. But um, I just wanted to do a quick follow-up, get some of these things kind of um, 
kind of best practices kind of laid on the ground you know we want to make sure that we make each other better um, and that's what we're here for so if you like this video please give me a thumbs up please subscribe please comment and share please follow me on twitter and instagram if you want to talk to us on discord the link is down there below if you do need it consulting best practices in uh, wired and wireless networking voice over ip storage with Synology, QNAP, or otherwise, uh, Active Directory for the small office. If you also need information security and assurance, you can reach out to us. Go to willyhow.com, fill out that uh, contact form. If we can't help you, we will get you to a vendor who can. That is our promise to you. If you want to support the channel on Patreon and become a patron, the link is down below. I appreciate all of those folks. And if you want to buy any of the gear that you see here on the channel, the Amazon links are down below. Once again, I do want to really, I want to thank you. I appreciate all of you for being here. And as always, we'll see you in the next video.